Hello, everybody, and welcome. I've got nothing left, and I assume you have it at home, or you might be right around the nation. A season comes down to 4.4 seconds in a game that the team who are desperately trying to score already knew they were finishing on top. What a season. What a weekend. What a day. I'm Cam Luke. Liam Santa Maria ripped it apart today. You, Jack Everin, and the GOAT, Damon Lowry in the house. It is, I know, Jack, I'm stealing it. It's unrivaled because I can't think of this happening in any other league around the world ever. Everybody take a deep breath. <laughs> It is the NBL's 23's world, and we're all living yeah. in it. <laughs> it has just been phenomenal. Both teams battling, scratching for a season to come down to four seconds, like you say. You, you, reality TV couldn't make up something mm -hmm. like this. It's incredible. One bucket. It came down to one bucket. Now, the, the one bucket, like, maybe Vasilyev hits that and it's over for the Wildcats. But one bucket over the course of the entire season, anywhere. There were multiple occasions this season, multiple, mm -hmm. where Melbourne United dribbled the ball out mm -hmm. of a game that they already had won in the final seconds. Now, if they go back and they try to score, they get one of those buckets... Who knows? Maybe they're in the finals oh. right now. It's unbelievable how close it was in the end. Let me ask you, I was at the game, right? So I didn't get a replay. The Chris Golding halftime shot, they got waved away. How tight was it? Mm. Wasn't, it wasn't good. It wasn't good? No. Milliseconds, though? No, it wasn't good. Wasn't? Second. Two seconds? So they're three seconds off. <laughs> Just trying to build a bit of drama. Either way, the drama's been built. Hey, let's, let's give a quick shout-out to two teams today. Adelaide were really good, yep. right? They were great on Friday night. I know you can say, oh, Cooks didn't play. They went to Melbourne. It was unlikely. They were really good. And Sydney, who had nothing to play for outside of their disdain for the Perth Wildcats <laughs> making the playoffs, yeah. went and hooped. Not only... Playing Cooks and most of their crew, obviously Walton didn't play. Mm. But down 23, they could have been, ah, oh, I'm done here. And they, uh, so you've got to give a shout-out to them. But let's start off with the Perth Wildcats because defensively they've had their question marks mm. and they stood up in the last two minutes. They stood up in the last three quarters, mm. Mm. to be honest. I was really impressed with what they brought defensively and I haven't been impressed at all yeah. with what they've brought uh, defensively and on the glass over the course of the season as a whole, and especially on Friday night, which there were some moments in that that were absolutely woeful, where they had a chance, they had their fortune in their hands. But today, with everything on the line, the whole group, guys that haven't been good defenders all year, Corey Webster, Brady Manning, were terrific today, and Luke Travers took his game to a whole nother level. Yeah. On a defensive point of view, like I said, it's not in Perth, collectively, to be able to repeat this on a regular basis. But in, their, but in passages, they can do it. They can make defensive cameo appearances, I like to call them. And with everything being on the line, this is when sometimes playing back-to-back -back games in short, short time frame, when you get embarrassed, you can't do nothing but respond. Had they lost that game the other night by a couple of points here or there, who knows what happens. But they were so badly embarrassed, they had no choice. And they came out and responded. And you could argue that's Bryce Cotton's worst ever game in the NBL. And they still won the game. Now, Amazing. a shooting performance, we know how talented he is around the court, so it's very hard to quantify. But the fact is, from a shooting performance, it is his worst. And they still won the game, double figures against the number one seed. And, and that's what they wanted to do in the offseason in free agency, find Bryce Cotton some help. Now, it's cost them defensively, but they wanted to have guys like Corey Webster, Brady Manick, who in these type of moments could put points on the board and they didn't have that last season. Well, hold that thought. Hold that thought because there's something you half alluded to it, but we need to talk Luke Travers on the other side of this. And South East Melbourne Phoenix are in. They're well rested. They've just been sitting at home smoking the pipe <laughs> and they're going to host the play-in game. What a day. Wait right there. Plenty more next. Welcome to At The Line. My name is Simon Legg and we're here to talk about the NBA and I'm joined, as, as always, by Josh Jenkins who played a little bit of basketball somewhere. Uh, every now and then, not at a very uh, high level, I can tell you. Uh, trade season, trade period, it is uh, upon us. It's where the good teams go to great teams. It's where a team who is thereabouts can turn themselves into a contender. So I love this time of the year. You're absolutely right. It's February 9 that the trade deadline ends. Everyone's getting ready off the back of the All-Star weekend. And as you say, there's been some very good examples of teams that have just gone the next level. And you've highlighted three players that you want to talk about that you think should go to a new home, not only to help a team but to help themselves. And the first one is Australian legend Paddy Mills. Yes, the legend himself. Australia's uh, best... Oh, I shouldn't... Sorry, Andrew Gaze. He's our second best Olympian of all time. 
Uh, I think Paddy Mills needs to find a new home because Brooklyn don't want to play him. Jacques Vaughan just doesn't want to put him on the floor. When he does, he gets buckets. That's what he does. So I want to send him to LA with the Lakers, with LeBron, because they cannot shoot the ball. We've you know, Westbrook and Beverly, none of those guys can shoot the rock. So Paddy Mills goes there, he opens the floor for LeBron and AD, shoots the rock, love to see it. And he's a great mover without the ball, which also helps. Now, the second player you want to identify is Kyle Kuzma, who has grown exponentially this season. Where do you want to see him go? Uh, I want him to go to Denver. Now, Ooh. I know they're atop the Western Conference, but he's an upgrade, in my opinion, on Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon's a good player. Kyle Kuzma's turned himself into an outstanding player. He's 20-plus a game. He gets on the boards. He, you know, he looks like he wears the funky stuff to the game and all that, but he gets on the glass and he plays hard. He'll spread the floor for Nikola Jokic as well. I'd love to see him go to Denver. It probably won't happen, but if it did, I'll take the credit. All I hear there is that you want him to move because he wears the funky stuff. But, look, <laughs> you know, that is important as well. And now the last player I want to talk about, DeAndre Ayton of the Suns. Now, he's had a, a lot of issues with his contract. Will he get a max deal? He's frustrated. The Suns aren't going that well. So I kind of agree with your logic, but where do you actually want to send him? Send him to South Beach. They need size. Bam's not big enough to play centre. It wears him out. He's tied in the playoffs. So send DeAndre Ayton. Give him $250 million, Send him to South Beach in Miami. Very well put. I like, I like where your head's up with a lot Thank of those you. selections. Now, we do have some games of NBA action on Monday that we need to talk about. The first game is an Eastern Conference battle between the Knicks and the 76ers. How do you see it playing out? And what's your bet? Yeah, old school rivals here. The Knickerbockers and the Sixers. Joel Embiid, he'll get busy against the Knicks. 35 plus take that to the bank he'll probably go north of 40 might go north of 50 and the 76ers i think they'll keep it close to the knicks but one to ten there four dollars 33 i like that i like it a lot it's very good thank you well played and if you want to follow at home please make sure you do so responsibly you know the score stay in control gamble responsibly It's a crossover, it's NBL overtime, it's the NBL regular season done and dusted and remarkably Liam Santamaria, Damon Lowry, Cam Luke just quickly. I want to give a shout out to Luke Travers who we know how, poten how much potential he's got and he's shown it and he's played well at certain times. He stands up in the biggest game of his career. He was mm. outstanding. I guess there's some big finals he's played in as well so it's probably a little... Mayo, but he was unbelievable today. And so they're coming of age games, Damon, and these are them. These are the ones that where you, you get the reputation. Because Luke Travers, all season, has been sometimey. Sometimes he's yeah. good, sometimes he's bad. And we and they, all everybody in Australia wants to see him all the timey. 
And today, when the chips were down, <laughs> and he was needed the most. <laughs> this dude stepped over the humongous double double limb as we see him crashing the glass, hitting threes. Yep. Just went nuts. He, he's three point shooting in the last month or so has gone to a whole new level, too, Liam. Look like an NBA player. Yeah, he does today because he's knocking down that three ball. But for me, the, the performance today wasn't all about the triples. We've seen them in recent weeks. It was the energy, the activity, the defense, the deflections, and in particular, the defensive rebounding. Now, he was in all the right spots to catch and finish around the rim, but it was a second career double-double. He should have had more double-doubles than that to this point because he got on the glass. It was brilliant. All right, if uh, you've just been living under a rock, we have no idea where the hell what's been happening is what happens now. We know that uh, Sydney and the New Zealand Breakers have a couple of days off. The seeding qualifier, the Cairns Taipans, will play the Jack Jumpers, and South East Melbourne Phoenix will play the Wildcats. The winner of the Taipans and the Jack Jumpers will play the Breakers. Uh, the loser will play the winner of Phoenix and the Wildcats, and the winner of that will play the Sydney Kings. We might just touch on Josh Majette quickly because uh, officially fractured eye socket, isn't it? Is that official? It's official. If I've got the actual injury wrong, anyway, it's a horrible break. It looked mm. horrible last night. It hurts them. It hurts them. Luckily for them, and, and bad luck to Josh, this is, this is sport, unfortunately, but they got depth in that backcourt. They're going to have to make up for him because he's an important piece. But with Sean McDonald, Jared Weeks, you know, they can do it by committee. He's more important than I think most people give him credit for. He's more important than I think my, my man here <laughs> appreciates. He's, he's the guy that makes that team hum, and they're really going to miss it. What a day. Like, legitimately, when we talk about the play-in tournament and we talk about the closeness of this competition, we didn't expect it would come down to a DJ Vazilovic mm. three, which could actually change two, two powerhouses. Mysteries. Two powerhouses, one going in, one missing out. What a weekend. You know what the best thing about this is? Mm. We're just getting started. <laughs> We've got the play-in, the qualifier and the playoffs. See you next week.